The following program is a part of the TCC Connection, Tulsa Community College's student newspaper. Episodes of the season of podcasts for a day include programming made available by the electronic communication class during the 2022 spring semester. Students were tasked with the creation of their own podcast episode. For the full season of podcasts for a day provided by the course, visit tccconnection.com or whichever platform you may be listening to. Enjoy the following episode. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Points of View podcast. I'm Kathy Silva, your host. Today I'm joined by Isabel. Um, Isabel is going by a different name today to shift her identity. She's not very comfortable sharing her experiences, especially since this um, podcast is going to be broadcasted through a college that she's currently attending, which is CCC. So, <clears throat> Isabel, could you tell us a little bit about your background? a little bit about yourself how was your childhood um well to begin with thank you for having me and um well my childhood was very simple it was um, something that most children experience i lived with my mother in arizona and uh my parents got divorced when i was eight years old i moved to oklahoma and I started living in Tulsa with my father after the divorce, around like 12 years old. Um, very happy family. Very happy. Yeah, no problems, really. Yeah. So I know we have you on this podcast today because of something that you agreed to share with us. Um, we spoke briefly and it, you told me that you had an eating disorder that you've been recovering from for a couple of years now. Um, it seems like you had a, a great childhood, you know, nothing too out of the ordinary. Um, but if you wouldn't mind, would you like to share with us how your eating disorder started? Where, where did that begin? How did that develop? Yeah, so um, where I recognize my eating disorder to have started, it's probably when I was like, 14 years old, I was introduced to weightlifting at that time. And, you know, fitness can be seen as a very, like, health-obsessed industry. So when I was introduced to weightlifting, I was told to adopt a very strict diet in order to see results. And I became quickly absorbed by wanting to achieve a certain physique. and restricting my diet excessively and it all really started with me wanting to become healthier but it quickly just unraveled and became very messy very quickly would you say that social media influenced some of that as well i think probably later on in my eating disorder when i was like like 15 and a half to 16. Um, Instagram was really big, so was YouTube. And if you were into YouTubers or anything like that, you'd see a lot of um, like two weeks and get flat stomach or get a chiseled uh, chin in like a week or something like that. Something really unachievable. And everyone would just say, oh, if you do this for this certain amount of time, you'll get these results and no one really talks about how no actually to it. It. so i think yeah, I it, had, it had some impact on my eating disorder for sure. at that age especially as a teenager you're very impressionable you know you're easily influenced by what you see online you know trying to follow whatever trends are going on I mean, I'm sure other people have experienced the same, but when did you finally realize that it was time to seek help? Did your family reach out? Did your family help you? No, my family actually did not really realize what was going on. Maybe like my older sister, she said that she was worried about me developing an eating disorder early on, like when I was like 14 and a half around there. And she had noticed that my eating patterns had changed and that I barely ate at home and that I overly exercised. But really what truly inspired my need for change is probably watching a YouTube video. It's like a really clickbaity title and thumbnail. 
and I clicked on it and it was like talking about completely different what I thought I would, you know, something that I didn't really think about. And it really changed my perspective on how you should view exercise and eating. So that's when I realized, oh, I have the wrong mindset. So how long have you been in recovery? uh serious recovery for probably like a year because um previously i had relapsed after trying to recover it's really difficult to recover recover without a support system and i didn't really have a solid support system until later on in my recovery so it's a it's a it's a it's a long struggle that you're still overcoming every day you know trying to keep yourself from uh, crawling back to old habits. I imagine that would be very difficult for you. Mm-hmm. Yes, very. So, what would you say to someone that is currently battling an eating disorder of their own? Uh, what would I say to someone who's battling an eating disorder right now? Yes. Like, what, what are your words of advice? What have you learned through your journey? I would tell them to let go of who they used to be. Because when you're recovering from your eating disorder, you get so used to the way you used to be, as in like the body that you used to have or the habits that you had, so much so that letting go of it really hurts you. So just let go of that and then you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So uh, besides, you know, watching that YouTube video, has there been anything else that has helped you to re- recovery? You know, I know you mentioned a uh, support system that, you, you know, you've gathered, but aside from that, what else has helped you? Are there any resources that you have that you would recommend to others? I think other resources that have helped probably reading more about the like, holistic approach Something that really helped me recovery during my eating disorder was reading up more on intuitive eating and learning those principles and those handbooks. There's a lot of textbooks or journals that you can fill out that really help monitor your eating and make sure you're not, you know, not eating, but also help recover your hunger cues. Because when you are, when you have an eating disorder for such a long time, you forget what it feels like to feel hungry because you're used to that all the time so i think gaining those hunger cues really help you end your eating disorder i just want to say thank you for joining us today um your pieces of advice and you sharing your story with us has been very insightful um i'm sure a lot of other people have been going through the same thing and as i've mentioned to you before the purpose of this podcast is to, you know, let other people know, you know, you're not going through this alone. I really appreciate you for coming on and sharing your journey and and helping others. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. Thank you.